This guest acquired the Persian bowl from her uncle following his passing. Despite knowing little about its origins, the guest believed it to be a Persian bowl. Well, it is Persian, and it's from the Safavid dynasty period, which started in 1501 and ended in 1736. Originating from the latter part of the dynasty, the bowl showcased typical features including three colors, black, green, and cobalt blue. The cobalt blue, a common element in Persian art, added a striking visual aspect to the bowl. Notably, the bowl's border exhibited influence from Chinese origins, while the bird motif and sun-face depiction were characteristic of the Safawid period. And given its size, it's remarkable it stayed intact. The appraiser highlighted the bowl's construction, mentioning its stoneware material and porcelain-like interior. Due to its rarity, size, and historical significance, the appraiser estimated its retail value to be between $15,000 and $17,000. The guest expressed astonishment at the bowl's appraisal. Oh, that's amazing. The guest brought in a striking vase, passed down through generations. This was actually the guest's grandmother's vase. Her mother got it when her grandmother died. This vase hails from the turn of the 20th century, crafted by Theophilus A. Brower in New York. Indeed, Brower, a Renaissance man, was known for his diverse talents, from architecture to painting. The vase was made actually in New York. Okay? It, was. it was made in sometime between 1898 and about 1910. He even ventured into ceramic arts, pioneering the technique known as fire painting. In addition to his ceramic work, Brower was renowned for his reinforced cement lawn figures and architectural projects. Notably, it features Brower's signature fire painting technique, evident in the vibrant hues adorning its surface. The vase also bears unique stripes, a rarity among Brower's works, adding to its allure. Despite its imperfections, the vase holds significant value. At auction today, this piece could fetch between... I would say at auction today, worth somewhere between $5,000 and $7,000. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Not so ugly after all, is it? <laughs> the guest brought a broken violin to the auction. And what happened next is truly remarkable. Is this violin is like so many we see. It's covered with dust. It's got bug larva in the case. The case is falling apart. This violin had belonged to the guest's aunt, who passed away in the 1960s. She was a musician and an artist. Uh, she did a lot of work with, at Walt Disney Studios, and I know she played the saxophone. I didn't know she played the violin. But she was a serious... The guest had no idea that this violin was made by one of the most famous violinists in U.S. history. The violin was crafted by Carl Becker, who had a legacy of violin making in the U.S., well, Carl Becker was one of the most significant violin makers to work in the United States. In fact, he is part of one of the longest running dynasties of violin making ever You're in kidding. the United States. The stamp on the violin suggested that it was made in 1935. The appraiser estimated the worth of the violin to be a whopping $30,000. The guest was delightfully surprised upon hearing the violin's worth. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Aunt Helen. <laughs> This stunning clock holds a special place in this guest's heart, given to her by her grandfather, who was a clock fixer and jeweler as a gift about 15 years ago. Originating from France, this clock is estimated to be from the late 19th to early 20th century. Mm -hmm. And it has a very Louis XV style to it. It's a vague Rococo motif. It's originally part of a three-piece set called a garniture. And there would be a decorative urn-like mm -hmm. object on either side, strictly for garnishing the clock. The clock features intricate gold work, applied after the blue color, showcasing meticulous craftsmanship. The centerpiece of the clock is the intricate artwork in the center. This clock is an eight-day clock with an enamel dial and original hands, reflecting a fleur-de-lis on the hour. Enamel dial, and these hands are the original hands this is a, also a reflex of fleur de lis uh -huh. on the hour hand. Yeah. The clock's bezel has a beveled glass, adding to its elegance. The artist who created the artwork on the clock was allowed to sign it, a rare and appreciated gesture. 
Retail value for a clock of this caliber is estimated to be between $1,200 and $1,500. Nice. We like that. Good. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you very much for bringing it in. Thank you so much, Dean, for all the info. This is great. This exquisite desk sets up a fascinating history, once belonging to the guest's grandfather who worked for Tiffany in the 1930s. This set is a rare Spanish pattern, reflecting the diverse range of styles Tiffany Studios produced. The set includes a memo pad, perpetual calendar, pen tray, rocker blotter, daily memo pad, letter rack, letter opener, magnifying glass, inkwell, and rare bookends featuring figures from Spanish history. Tiffany Studios, facing financial difficulties, often paid employees with items rather than cash making this set even more special. Despite Tiffany's association with Art Nouveau styles, this set showcases the studio's ability to cater to various tastes, with the Spanish pattern being a testament to that diversity. A complete set like this would be highly sought after and could sell for approximately $15,000. Wow, it's great. In the world of comics, Milton Kniff left an indelible mark with his iconic creation, Terry and the Pirates. But he wanted to make his own characters, so he came up with Steve Canyon. He showed his new characters at an event in Columbus, Ohio. People really liked them. Kniff's friend's dad was also into drawing cartoons, and he thought Kniff was so good that he decided to do something else. Kniff's drawing of Steve Canyon, Copper Calhoun, and Fita Fita was the first time anyone saw them. This drawing is really big and colorful. It's extra special because it's the first appearance of Steve Canyon. The appraiser thinks it's worth at least $10,000 because it's a really important piece of art. Really? Absolutely. It's, it's a masterpiece by a master comic strip artist. Well, it has a lot of sentimental value. This guest brought a watercolor believed to be by famous artist Harrison Fisher. It is just a copy, likely used as a magazine cover illustration of Ladies Home Journal in November 1909. While the copy itself has a decorative value, unfortunately, it isn't an original Harrison Fisher watercolor. At auction, it would sell for value of about two hundred dollars uh, paid five dollars well you're already ahead <laughs> so, yeah but if it were an actual harrison fisher watercolor the value would probably be more like three to five thousand okay. the guest brought in a treasured candlestick inherited from her grandmother it was my grandmother's and she kept it in a special party room and ever since i was a certain age i just loved it and when i turned 21 she gave it to me as a gift it is a valuable piece by Tiffany Studios, dating back to 1900 to 1918. It is signed on the underside, very clearly with the model number as well. Unfortunately, to clean the candlestick by polishing, removed most of its original patina, significantly reducing its value. At this current state at auction, it is valued at. It is now worth about $200. Oh, really? But it's but still it, valuable to me. Exactly. You can't put a price on that. The guest purchased a bronze sculpture at an auction, believing it to be by artist Albert Humphreys. However, this is but a replica or restruck piece. When you actually begin to look at the articulation of this bronze, it doesn't have the finesse that an original would. While an original Humphreys bronze could be worth $30,000, Replicas like this hold a value closer to what she paid. So they're worth about $600. Well, you'd be. If they were uh, original, we'd be looking at a $30,000 bronze. Oh, well. These are Japanese vases, which mark the beginning of the post-industrial revolution worldwide trade. They were really produced exclusively for the Western market and wouldn't have been attractive to the Japanese. It dates back to the early 20th century and at auction would fetch... At $500 to $800. Okay, so I did okay. You did all right. The guest inherited the Chinese bronze brush pot from her great-grandmother, who received it from her deceased brother, who experienced the 1906 earthquake and fire in San Francisco. Intrigued by the item since childhood, the guest had always been fascinated by it. This is a Chinese cast bronze brush pot. 
Okay, used to contain brushes that would be used for calligraphy or painting. Mm. During the earthquake period, many objects were being brought from China to the west coast of America. The pot was made in the 19th century, even though it bears a fake mark from the Qianlong period. It has substantial weight and is visually impressive with its five five-clawed dragons. This exquisite bronze pot could have been exchanged as a gift among wealthy merchants. Given its rarity, this unique piece could fetch a handsome sum of. It would bring somewhere in the vicinity, we think, of between five and eight thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I had no idea! There is a heartwarming story involving this Steuben glass paperweight passed down through a family. The guest's parents, the former governor and first lady of North Dakota, received the gift from a friend on their last night in the governor's residence. Mom with this red leather box and dad with a little tiny box that had the key to her heart in it. This Steuben heart and key paperweight, number 1007, was designed by James Houston in the 1970s. They are 18 karat gold and also have the original fitted box. While Steuben glass is known for its colored pieces, this crystal example represents the crystal period known for its superior quality. The retail price of this item is... Roughly $2,500 to $3,500. My. With the original box, adding another... The box might be worth about $150. It's always wonderful to have the box. What we have here is this Chinese enameled porcelain that was brought to the show by this guest, who had inherited it from her grandmother. Although the enamelware wasn't the tightest work, it still includes finely detailed pieces showcasing enameled Indian lotus flowers and Rui or Lingi colors on a yellow background surrounding the vase. This piece was painted and enameled in a Moriyagi style indicating that the piece was in relief and then fired with a celestial landscape alternating on the outer surface of the vase, showcasing a lady in the garden and a scholar doing rock work. Looking at the bottom of the vase, there is a Chinese Qianlong mark, indicating its Chinese origin and substantiating its dating from the 18th to 20th century. Although this piece belongs to the 19th to 20th century, it still commands a hefty price tag in the market. The appraiser valued this at around $12,000 to $15,000. Wow. <laughs> That's more than I thought. Thank you. This guest's grandmother from Portugal handed down this special teapot to him. The name Fall River on the teapot indicates that the family settled in the Fall River around 1910. This teapot is bargeware, identifiable by its rich chocolatey brown glaze and vibrant appliques. Bargeware gained popularity among canal boat residents in England. The majority of bargeware originates from Leicestershire, near Mesham. It becomes intriguing and valuable because of its rare North American reference. If it wasn't of North American interest, it might be worth $150 or $200. Mm -hmm. According to the appraiser's evaluation, the value for this piece is for... I'm going to give you a value that I think is fair for replacement or insurance. Okay. As $2,000. Wow. Great thing. Wow. These banks pass through generations from the grandfather to the father and then to the guest. Both mechanical banks were manufactured by the same company. Shepherd Hardware Company, located in Buffalo, New York, during the late 19th century. Although paint loss is evident, these Shepherd banks are still in good condition. Yeah. I've also loaded it with a penny so we can see the action, mm -hmm. so we'll do that right now. <laughs> and he drops the there penny goes, in, yep. and uh, you can have that penny. Thank you. <laughs> the Trick Pony Bank was designed by Charles Shepherd and Peter Adams around 1885. The second bank, features an iconic Santa Claus design with an action of dropping a penny into the chimney. Both banks are made of cast iron and feature a simple mechanism. Value of each bank would reveal an interesting assessment. So a nice trick pony like this, you know, the value is 800 to about $1,000. Considering the condition of this bank 
I would say an auction estimate would be 3000 to 4000 Wow, really? Yeah. Oh, God, he would be so pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Over time, the value of these items has declined, now fluctuating between $1,200 and $1,900. Alan Page, former football great and Minnesota Supreme Court justice, brought this banner to auction in Minnesota. It was an 1865 parade banner that was used after Lincoln was assassinated. Allen saw this banner 15 years ago in Chicago belonging to an antique dealer. I was sort of depressed that we left without it. <laughs> and the following Christmas, this was my Christmas gift. The banner was in great shape indeed. Emotional slogans were written on both sides of the banner. And when I saw that, you know, we haven't quite healed yet. And when I say I got emotional, it was because this is the hope. We still have that hope. The appraiser estimated its worth to be $25,000. The Lincoln morning items are a little bit step, a step down in terms of value. Allen was happy to hear the price, but denied putting the piece in the auction because of its sentimental value. The appraiser met someone who saved a big sculpture from being destroyed in a building. Even though it wasn't in great shape, it still looked like a real work of art. The guest thought it might be by a famous artist, Henry Mole, and said it was made around 1966-1967. The sculpture was made of fiberglass, bronze, and stone, but its exact origin was uncertain. The appraiser found it strange that such a significant piece of Henry Mole would go unnoticed by collectors, so he refused the notion that the piece was by Henry Mole art. So my feeling is it looks like Henry Mole, but I'm not sure it is Henry Mole. The appraiser estimated it was worth around 3,000 pounds. So I'm going to say at auction, two to 3,000 pounds. Brilliant. The guest seemed to agree with the price. The guest brings in a private album and letters from the last of the Romanovs, the Russian royal family who were wiped out in 1917 by the Bolsheviks. The guest inherited these from his stepdad's uncle, who was a chief engineer in Gatlinburg. He received these from a member of the Russian royal family. These are incredible photographs indeed. The guest also brings along a series of letters that were from the royal family's last days. Uh, this letter here, I have to read this last, this little bit, this paragraph here. For the last two days, they've been pumping the water out of the old shaft in the forest. The appraiser seems super excited to see these items. He claims that these items are fresh to the market and are very valuable. The appraiser estimated the value to be. So I'm going to have to value them, which is a particularly difficult thing. Um, I think 65,000 pounds. Thank you. For Thank you me. very much. Appreciate it. This guest takes viewers back to the harrowing days of the Falklands campaign as he presents an extraordinary artifact from the conflict. The items include a map and some incredible photographs. The HMS Glamorgan, a Royal Navy destroyer, played a crucial role in the conflict. And this artifact serves as a tangible reminder of the bravery and resilience exhibited by its crew. The guest shares a gripping first-hand account of the events surrounding the missile strike. It offers insights into the intense moments leading up to and following the impact. Breathe a sigh of relief, and then the next week there was a firm echo, and then the next week there was another firm echo, and in my heart of hearts, I just knew it was an Exocet missile. Despite the devastation caused by the missile, the crew's quick thinking and decisive actions ultimately saved the ship from further harm. There's no point in winning the war if you can't win the peace. No, I'll drink to that. <laughs>